back. You're watching Politically Correct only on TV Cosmopolitan. My name is Leon Gary. With me in studio is a gentleman by the name Franklin Wenwendani. That's Wendani Franklin. He, he, he likes to be called that. I don't know why I keep you know, changing. Is it Franklin or Wendani Franklin? <laughs> They're both my names. I, I, I really love Wendani as a name. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a big name and new to you. Too. Okay. Yeah. And, and what we're discussing today, uh, before we took a break, we were looking at uh, the development of the, that Jubilee has brought about in the, in the country. And of course, remember, you can send in your views and comments to the number 0774-455. That's the number 0774-455. Of course, it's running there on your screen. Also, you can send in your views through our Twitter handle. That's at Leangari. And uh, tell us what you think about today's topic. Tell us what you want us to highlight uh, in our program. But today's topic is basically Jubilee Development uh, areas where we can see that Jubilee, the Jubilee government has done a lot in terms of bringing progress and development in the country. And um, frankly, just recently, uh, the InfoTrack research company um, released some some poll, mm -hmm. and what the what they were saying is, 53% of Kenyans feel the country is headed the, in the wrong direction, and about 44% of them feel the country is headed in the right direction. Do you think that as a country we are headed in the wrong direction? No, uh, Leah, in terms of um, issues that are info track, maybe would have asked, you know, in their questionnaires, that's where we got the response. Uh, so that uh, if the question was whether Kenyan in terms of Kenya in terms of corruption was heading the right direction, in terms of tackling whether gov the government was properly tackling corruption, then uh, that, is, that would be the right answer, that uh, no, we are not heading in the right direction. But uh, Leia would say that uh, on issues that are generally development, on issues that are social, on issues that are benefiting the, uh, the country, economy, trade, uh, infrastructure, Kenya is heading in the right direction. Now, those small uh, you know, hitches here and there, uh, maybe in terms of uh, and crime rate, in terms of security, in terms of uh, corruption, those are the few indicators that InfoTrack may, may, may have, uh, you know, used to gauge uh, the stand of Kenyans uh, against uh, the, the operations of the government. Uh, and for me, I want but to say that... Uh, you know, when we look at corruption right now, it's been all over, you know. One minute today is the Eurobond, the next thing is the NYS funds. The other thing, you're finding there are some people who have been implicated in, in corruption mm. in regard to the opposition. It's like basically corruption has become a thing of every day you sure, know, sure. And, and uh, maybe it's also uh, logical for what the InfoTrack research company did I, I want to partially agree uh, with you and also with uh, what InfoTrack has said uh, but i also want to highlight uh, to bring to the attention of us all that uh, previously uh, even in previous governments uh, corruption has always been there, not just in Kenya, across the world. But we don't have, you we have always had corruption. Affects the economy is in a very it does. Way. It does affect. But uh, what I'm trying to bring out, uh, Lea, is that uh, of late, uh, the media, uh, everyone has become a journalist. So we, we have people who are tweeting from their sitting rooms right now. We have people who are on Facebook already, you know, highlighting those issues. So the public has become more aware of, of corruption in terms of uh, uh, giving bribes and receiving bribes. And uh, by that awareness alone, uh, corruption, uh, you know, the voices that are actually, the soundings on corruption have actually grown. So with the escalation now of attention to one's uh, corruption, then uh, we not say that uh, today as it is, uh, the, the Kenya today is more corrupt than the Kenya yesterday. We just came from the Moi regime. I, I don't want to disparage uh, what uh, much more uh, president uh, did uh, then, but I want to say that uh, as it is right now, the government, the Jubilee government, is, is, is doing as much as, uh, as they can. Remember the other day? If you compare the Moi regime and the Jubilee regime right now, what, rather Uhuru's regime, would you say we've been able to tackle corruption better than the previous regimes? In the Moi regime, uh, Lea, uh, Kenyans were not really aware what corruption was. People were aware of, uh, of, of people who were in government, and eating from the government, or rather eating the government. But currently, even at, uh, uh, you know, uh, one, a class one people will tell you what corruption is. And that's a, the kind of, uh, you know, f uh, socialization that we already have today, the familiarization around corruption that we have so today. So we saying corruption was 
there before? Corruption in the Moi regime was even more uh, magnif you know, it, it was, it was, it was enormous than we have today. So the Jubilee but, government but, is but, uh, Lea, than the former regime with all the corruption cases? Those had? are not my words, Madam Lea. That's not, those are totally not my words. What I'm trying to say is that the government today is trying in every small effort and even in, in bigger ways to make sure that uh, we have uh, issues of corruption handled and tackled with a finality. See what we have done uh, with, with the ESCC, the Ethics and, and Corruption Commission. The previous regimes have tried and failed. The current regime has uh, come on board, uh, fired uh, most of these uh, uh, you know, uh, commissioners, put it in the constitution, implemented the constitution in terms of, uh, of appointment uh, to that commission, and right now they're legislating around uh, giving the ESCC uh, you know, proper tools of, of trade so that uh, the ESCC can be given prosecutory powers. And in so doing, we are going to see uh, those that we call big fish uh, not just appearing in court, but also suffering uh, from their past deeds. Mm -hmm. So let, let me say that uh, the government is putting an effort, but we also as Kenyans need to support the government. Uh, the government is not corrupt. We Kenyans are corrupt. So let, uh, let us take it upon ourselves. So you're saying corruption is an individual issue? Corruption is an individual, uh, an individual issue. What Ban Ki-moon said the other day is that uh, we can only measure corruption by the lack of infra, you know, facilities, health facilities, education facilities, you know, social amenities, infrastructure on the ground. We cannot measure corruption in terms of how, many, how, much, people, uh, how much money uh, a person has put in the pocket. We cannot say that Kenya is corrupt because uh, Madam Waiguru has been you know, found to be wanting in terms of service delivery. That is an individual that, 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 that maybe uh, one or two individuals uh, in that uh, particular uh, you know, uh, docket or agency who may have failed in their duties. Let but there are people in power. I'm sure before they, they get involved in uh, corru corruption issues, I think the people who have hired them must perhaps know what exactly is going on. So there is no way you can say it's so much <coughs> an individual issue because there is protocol that has to be followed. Uh, Leah, when, when the government hires uh, uh, an individual to a particular docket, in uh, the, the government is confident that uh, you are going to that uh, particular docket with trust and, and integrity. That's where we have the public uh, ethics and uh, uh, you know uh, the public ethics act because we want to trust that uh, when you as an individual are given a role and a responsibility, you 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 the role is bigger than yourself. You are able to you know articulate what is expected of you. Now, when maybe an individual like uh, uh, previously like C S Y Goro, maybe like uh, other people who are people of interest that have been mentioned uh, around corruption, when we find that that. Uh, money or, or public resources have been lost, then it is upon those individuals to carry their own crosses. It's not the government. Let's the, look at the state of the economy. I want to, uh, on, uh, on that simple one point, I want to agree with what uh, one uh, uh, Onyango Olo, uh, the Secretary General of uh, TNA said, that uh, the government has not uh, cushioned, uh, it has not uh, put anyone in a docket to go and eat. Mm -hmm. It has not instructed anyone to, uh, to go to an office uh, and, take, uh, and steal from the public. So when one is caught uh, with his uh, hands uh, in the cookie jar, then let that person carry his own cross. Not the government, let that one person carry his own cross. Okay. I want us to look at the state of the economy of Kenya. Um, and I think the first question we need to ask ourselves is, does the, money ha does the government rather have enough money to sustain the economy as it is? Leah, we should be asking, are the Kenyans willing to support this economy? because the Kenyans are the taxpayers. The Kenyans, uh, we have been told previously, ulipe ushuru uchitegeme. We have Kenyans who are putting uh, monies where they are not supposed to be putting that money. Kenyans who are uh, filter, you know, pilfering the, the economy, stocking money uh, in uh, offshore accounts, whereas that money should be here developing Kenya. We also have Kenyans who are stealing in the small ways. Police officers on the, on the ground who are taking 50 shillings, Kanju Askaris who are you know, molesting uh, hawkers uh, and taking bribes. If Kenyans uh, give this government uh, support, if Kenyans... But Kenyans have been giving support. If, you if want Kenyans, to say that... Le 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 if Kenyans pay uh, their dues properly, this country will have enough money to develop itself. So are we saying that for the government to sustain the economy, it's dependent entirely on the Kenyans? For the government to develop this nation, Le the revenue has to come up. 
but the Kenyans returns the, retu the returns at KRA mm -hmm. the targets that have been set by the government <coughs> and the exchequer at the at, at KRA those targets have to be achieved right now as we speak uh, we have just uh, received reports that uh, the last uh, uh, quarter of of the target was not uh, you know realized so it it only means that uh, the manufacturers out there the traders out there the us the individuals we are, we are not really uh, remitting what we're supposed to. We are not giving CISA what belongs to CISA. In terms of uh, uh, international support, I would say that there, there's a lot of potential there. We, we have seen uh, you know, resources being found here and there. We have seen developments in Kuala, in uh, Kitui, uh, in Kilifi. Uh, when you go to Trukana right now, we, we have others uh, that are just be found in terms of uh, petroleum resources uh, in Kerio Valley. The government uh, will have all these uh, minerals and resources back to Kenyans through uh, investment and development. So we cannot say that the government is, uh, is bankrupt. No, the government is not bankrupt. What is happening is that Kenyans are withholding their resources, which are corrupt deeds, which are actually uh, you know, stealing from your own self. And come on, Kenya at Alipa Ushuru to Tajita Gemea. What we are seeing uh, uh, with China, uh, with Japan, uh, and with the World Bank, in terms of support, is not basically loans. They're not all loans. Some of those are grants. Grants which have been given to Kenya pegged on performance. Let's look at the World Bank uh, funds that were given just the other day. Um, would you say that it is wise for Kenyans, for the Kenyan government to accept those funds, yet it also still has a huge debt to pay? No, if it's a, if it's, it's a, if it's a loans, if these are loans, uh, Leah, then I would say that already Kenyans we have had enough loans. Uh, maybe it's time for the government to go slow on, on those loans and, and see whether we can spread uh, you know, the cost of paying that, uh, the already existing loans uh, in the next uh, maybe several years. But uh, for what the World Bank did uh, uh, in December last year and uh, February this year was give Kenya a grant to support devolution and also uh, to support uh, infrastructure. Those, that grant was pegged on the performance uh, of Kenya uh, in terms of uh, previous, uh, you know, grants and uh, previous targets. Remember, uh, World Bank has a, a budget itself, and uh, it has to implement that budget as, a, as an organ, as an international organ. So when, when the World Bank, uh, you know, sits and uh, looks at Kenya as a, uh, as a people that have potential in terms of development, and uh, who respond to their objective as World Bank, then we, we as Kenyans have no control of how they invest their money. If they see us and uh, we, we look like people that can be invested upon, then they come and invest, then it's welcome. We are very happy when they help us uh, fight out some of those uh, you know, uh, handicaps that we have. When we look at the Eurobond saga, mm -hmm. which was just there the other day, money was lost and there is still no, no clear uh, direction that has been made in regards to unearthing where the money is. Uh, we also have the NYS funds saga we, we we now have funds coming in from the world bank like you have said in february but the question is do you think we need uh, more or tighter mechanisms to dictate how the money that is coming into our country from foreign countries is used um Mleha, the constitution is very clear on how we invest as a country and how we spend the exchequer we have a budgetary cycle which runs from January to December and then January again. Uh, a cycle that uh, involves uh, the public through public participation, uh, which has actually been uh, cascaded, rather, which has trickled down to uh, the counties uh, through uh, the county uh, you know, finance bills. Now, as a policy expert, I would say that uh, every year, the minister, the, C, the, 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 the CS in charge of uh, uh, you know, Treasury, uh, comes up with a policy on how the budget will be rolled out. This policy is given to uh, Parliament for endorsement. It becomes an act. Uh, once that, uh, that has been passed, then the, gov the, the government has a direction on how to implement itself, or rather how to, how to behave around uh, you know, rolling out, uh, you know, uh, implementing the budget for that particular financial year. I would say that uh, we might not really have achieved uh, what uh, international standards per se will be. But according to World Bank, we are at 22 uh, in terms of rating, and 22 is good. 
and because 22 is uh, is the, the the highest rank that any African country has achieved as yet. Okay. So we, we are we are ruling in the right direction, and uh, uh, let me say that uh, uh, with with proper management, Leah, with with uh, good monitoring and evaluation, and uh, with with people, uh, public leaders, especially the governors, uh, and uh, you know the duty bearers at the county and the departmental hands. If these people, those people are honest in implementing the government, the, the, the government uh, policies, then we are, not, we are not going to have Kenyans suffering from health uh, in complications for lack of health amenities. We are not going to have kids uh, not going to school because of lack of uh, you know, uh, school infrastructure. For, for instance, earlier, in, in the constraints that I'm trying to uh, endear myself to and, and which I've uh, you know, committed to serve in the next uh, election, uh, that is uh, 2017, for example, constituency. A school like uh, Gedurai uh, Primary School, or even a school like uh, Roisampo Primary School, Gedurai Primary School uh, serves a community of 40,000. Now, in a community of 40,000, uh, and whereas uh, in terms of uh, poverty index, Gedurai will be marked as one of those uh, you know, areas that are really poor, uh, uh, poor in my constituency, then it shows that uh, the expectation of the nation the government itself and the people is that half of these, uh, you know, pupils will go to Gedurai Primary School because it's a public school. But how much in terms of capacity can that one school hold? So, so if if people are not corrupt, if uh, people don't, uh, public officers are responsible uh, in terms of their roles, then we should we, we could be having right now we could be speaking of the current, uh, uh, you know, representative of that particular area investing in constructing or rather purchasing land to construct another public school. Okay. But that is not happening. So let me say that there's enough money. All we need to do is manage this money appropriately. Do you think the yeah. government is managing the money properly? I'm saying the government has enough money. We only need the duty bearers to manage these resources appropriately. Okay. Well, you're watching Politically Correct on TV Cosmopolitan. Remember, again, you can send in your views and comments on the number running on your screen. That's 0774-455. That's, again, 0774-455. Very in interesting uh, issues we, we have highlighted here. And, and uh, Franklin has a lot to say uh, around those issues. Of course, we're trying to find out exactly what is happening in our country. Do, are, we, are we developing as a country? Of course, we'll be tackling more issues after the break, so don't go too far. We'll be back shortly with issues pertaining the Okoa Kenya.